this is a moment where it's an opportunity to to really make something happen to create change and the idea that you know we have to move away from you know simply putting out hashtags or uh, blacking out our social media platforms for a day we got to do something really really profound and tangible and 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 start rolling up our sleeves and 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 getting our hands dirty in terms of actually figuring out not just having those tough conversations but moving those conversations into the realm of action and implementation it's a critical thing it has to happen we also have introduced several we think important steps to make sure that we've got actions aligned behind these values and you know things like making sure that in our case as the world's largest healthcare products company we know that covid-19 has had a significantly disproportionate effect on the black community and on minority communities and so we want to go out and we want to find out why is that what's the underlying nature what can we do better to make sure that uh you know your zip code isn't making or contributing more to uh, your uh, life expectancy frankly than other healthcare factors and so we we we're committing more than 50 million dollars we just recently added 10 more to that to say what can we be doing in these areas to under, understand that fact better we're working with all of our suppliers and you know we work with more than 3000 suppliers around the world and we're trying to use our size for good and say what are you doing in some of these areas around diversity and inclusion how can we share best practices with many of them uh and then of course the other thing that we're doing that we're very pleased that we announced we're going to be working uh with the National Museum of African American History and Culture and they've got some wonderful programs regarding the history of racism and injustice and how do we build on some of these on an iconic institution Uh, and we're going to be doing more than 10 million dollars over the next 3 years to try not only within Johnson and Johnson but more broadly in communities to frankly have these discussions and come to a better understanding. It's a shame that you know when 2020 that racism, you know, social inequality, violence are are still even present on the planet. That being said, we we announced this morning the formation of a 100 million dollar fund that we're going to utilize to fight social injustice, to bring more social equality uh to the forefront and to support in the music ecosphere uh musicians in need. You know, yesterday we observed uh blackout or or you know the show must be paused but yesterday was one day of reflection and we're going to play the long game by supporting groups that are that are working to eliminate racism inequality and violence it's it's the right thing to do and we're committed to do it david we believe our company is a place where our team can have conversations and do to talk about things about that are going on in society and affecting them as individuals that can bring the whole self to work and be who they are. One of the other areas that we're pushing is to take that that that, that kind of openness and conversations and dialogue and and try to scale it across inside our company it's it's exists and outside the company. Things aren't going to quiet down. They shouldn't quiet down on terms of making the economic progress within the in the core social progress we need to make here if you go back 50 years ago when the united states was uh in very tough circumstances around these similar issues it's 50 years later there's twice as many people working there's the united states has made great progress but still we haven't fixed some of these issues and it's time to fix them so we can't let it quiet down on this we have to keep pushing and that by doubling down our efforts we'll make a lot more money available and i'm sure other companies as companies believe that they have to be part of the solution will help do this and wind up with more money working faster across proven programs across the country but i i just don't want to leave you the thought that this is going to quiet down it shouldn't quiet down we, we should not let it quiet down as a business community we have to double redouble our efforts to make the progress so it doesn't occur not quiet down political equality fairness before the law and economic equality are all one thing in this community uh the um you remember 1963 uh the famous march in washington where um martin luther king spoke by the way my mother attended that as a 43 year old housewife 
um, uh, in Washington by herself. Uh, and um, it was titled The March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. This has always been about economics and political rights, and they've always been understand, understood to be one and the same. As a consequence of which, policies like voting rights, criminal justice reform, and gun control are every bit as important as minimum wage, health care, uh, affordable housing, uh, and um, education. Uh, by the way, one of the one of the most I think I personally think that one of the most important things we can do is to equally fund education in our country. We have a country where where there's a promise of equality. We have some some public schools that are like country clubs and other public schools that are like tenements. Uh, but there's a whole range. We have to approach this. If we're, that's going to, I think, number one. So the second thing I would say very quickly in answer to your question, Andrew, is that business people tend to focus on this in the moment. Business people are deeply incented by their companies to focus on the profitability of the business. Very few of them. One of them is um, my dear friend Randall Stevenson, who was on yesterday, can rise above that and think more broadly about the social interest. So business people really tend to only to focus on these issues when it's right in front of them and it's in the way of them doing business. Uh, and uh, so that's why people, you don't see the continuous uh, um, uh, application of their energies and capital to this problem. Maybe now we finally have it in front of us that we can do it. But there are a whole, we can get into some of the other agenda issues. There's a whole broad set of agendas that I think the business community should get behind. Personally, because it's philosophically the right thing to do, but also in their case, if they don't believe in that philosophically and politically, because it's in the best interest of their business. There are so many great entrepreneurs out there across this country, not just in Silicon Valley, who are building great businesses and innovating. And we plan to make investments in those entrepreneurs. We plan to find those founders and help them grow their businesses to the next level. I think taking a step in the right direction and taking action right now is the most important thing that we can do. And so opening up a fund of this size will not only give us access to more founders and more entrepreneurs, but also help those founders and entrepreneurs who already started companies, those black founders and entrepreneurs who've already started companies, actually grow those businesses to the size and scale that we need to see the change that we want in our world. The and 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 pizza, which people often ask me about, has always been about promoting unity, doing the right thing. And that means today providing PTO for activism. So all employees will receive an additional three days on top of the existing PTO with uh, additional incentives and opportunities to earn more. And, and yes, you're right with respect to this notion of activism being a really broad idea and we leave it to our employees' discretion what is most important to them. We rolled this policy out uh, Sunday and so we've been moving at light speed to try to make sure we could accommodate as many requests. Uh, the numbers are on the lower side. We have approximately 700, 750 employees and expect uh, the number of those taking uh, advantage of the opportunity will be roughly you know, 40, 50 percent in the very short term and hopefully as many as 100 percent in the long term. Since this is a, a stake in the ground for us, this is a long term commitment. Um, this is not just about uh, today. This is definitely in honor of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery. But this is just the start of our uh, continued effort uh, in this movement to make sure that we're using our platform to do good, to make a stand and encouraging other restaurant owners because the restaurant industry represents, uh, actually is the second largest you know, private employer in America and food service industry employs 10% of America's workforce. So it's very important for us, especially those employing persons of color to, to take a stand and, and show that we care and we're willing to take action. Mm -hmm.